All of the footage you're about to see is me drawing when I have zero motivation to draw. I'm just going to give you a heads up that the drawings you'll see me make in this video are all very embarrassing to me. It might not seem like it, but I am currently trying to ignore the alarm bells going off in my head telling me not to post the art in this video because I'm convinced that you will think less of me, which is probably not true, especially now that you know the context in which these drawings were made. Honestly though, this video would probably be really good to have as background noise while you draw, so if you're gonna try to use this video as an excuse to get yourself to push through the art block and draw again, get your stuff out and let's start drawing now. So when I hit the record button on these drawings, it actually felt painful to draw, like almost physically painful, but I did it anyway. And the idea of letting anyone on the internet see this side of me that struggles so much gave me chills. Especially since I actually tried on these drawings and felt like a total failure afterwards. But I thought that showing myself pushing through it as an example was important to illustrate the point. Yes, that pun was 100% intentional. And no, I will never apologize for it. So, enjoy seeing me struggle to put things on paper while I also struggle to make words appear in your ear holes. Let's get started. How to draw when no motivation. I've been asked this question more times than I can count, which doesn't make any sense to me because I also ask myself the same question. I feel like I'm probably the least productive artist on YouTube, maybe even the least productive person in general on this godforsaken website. My desire to make art and create content is there, and I beat myself up every day that I don't. So why is it still so hard? I've watched dozens of videos on motivation and dozens more specifically on motivation for artists. Maybe I'm just fortunate enough to have the lucky combination of being both lazy and dumb. Cause you'd think after countless hours of consuming motivational content, I would have learned a thing or two by now. So why do I feel more discouraged than ever? I think those motivational videos, well at least the ones that are genuinely trying to be helpful, not the ones that are just there to exploit your insecurities and get you to sign up for a once in a lifetime coaching experience, or to buy their ebook that will save your life. Hurry before this once in a lifetime offer runs out. Frick those guys all the way to heck. Excuse my language, but they really grind my guts, you know? Do me a favor and never listen to them, okay? <sighs> anyway, I think those motivational videos that you see are missing a key perspective. And that is to understand why you are there watching that video in the first place. Because everyone has a slightly different reason why they are lacking in motivation. These motivational videos are meant to be the solution, right? But it doesn't help to implement a solution if you don't actually understand the problem first. Like, you can give me a screwdriver, but if I don't know which screw to undo, or the fact that it's even supposed to be used on screws in the first place, I'm just going to be sitting there with a beautiful screwdriver in my hand, hating myself for having the tool to fix my problem without the ability to actually put it to use in my particular situation. That might sound a bit strange and vague, and it might not make much sense until you realize that snails play the key role in this whole thing. They kind of tie everything together in a way I never understood before. Yes, snails. The crawly, spineless things with the shelter on their back. I don't care! I will not apologize. I like words. Get a life. Let people enjoy things. Bully me in the comments if you feel so strongly about it. It just adds to my total comments, and I get to laugh at you when I read it, so it's a win-win for me, Cool Dave 87 Like, I don't know why you girls even bother at this point. Like, give it up. It's me. I win. You lose. I'm getting distracted. Okay, snails. Right, snails. This is very important, and I would encourage you to take notes if you can. B flat major is my personal choice, but it's up to you. We can just play it by ear. Let's say one of my favorite songs comes on, okay? Usually, I'll sing along because the team that put together the music uses well-known psychology to make it so catchy that I would almost have to sing along. Let's say that one day, I accidentally step on a snail. And now, when my favorite catchy song comes on, I'm too sad to sing along because now I'm just thinking about the snail. If I don't feel like singing on that particular day, in that particular moment, I just don't sing. 
That's not unusual, it's happened plenty of times before. But it continues for a few days. A few days turns into a few weeks, and pretty soon, it's been a few months since I've felt like singing my favorite song. The song I almost always sing along to. This is not normal. Something is, in fact, wrong. In order to sing along to my favorite song again, I need to return to the state of mind that allows me to do so, which I am not currently able to do because I am dealing with the sadness and guilt of seeing myself accidentally become a snail murderer. Sometimes I can force myself to sing along, and I do, but pretty soon, with these feelings and my current state of mind, I'm just not able to bring myself to sing my favorite song any longer. I obsess about this snail. I try to distract myself with other things that send good feelings to my brain, like video games, food, scrolling through social media, popping the zit on my face until it becomes a giant crater that I'm ashamed of for the next week and a half, eventually forming itself into a scar to remind me of my lack of self-control. But those things that give me good feelings only work temporarily, and when I'm lying in bed, alone with my thoughts at night, the sadness comes flooding back into my brain even stronger than it was before because it's been building up all day without any release. So I stay up and try to distract myself even more until I'm too tired to wrestle with my thoughts and I just fall asleep. But now I have to be up for work, and I stayed up very late last night distracting myself from the pain. I'm sleep deprived, which makes all of my sadness even worse than before because without sleep, my brain has an even lower ability to deal with tough emotions. So I distract myself again and lie awake with my thoughts again, and wake up exhausted again, and it continues. My grades start slipping. I'm fired from my job. I become distant with my friends. They're confused why I take weeks to respond, and they worry it's something they did wrong. They did nothing wrong. I love my friends, and I would die for them if I wasn't dead inside already. It's now been three years since I stepped on that snail. I'm a shell of my former self. You SHUT suck. UP! My friends that have stuck around tell me that I've changed. They want to help me, but they don't know how. How can they help me if I don't even know how to help myself? I question if life is even worth living anymore. I try to convince myself that the snail ran out under my foot before I even had a chance to see it. But snails are not that fast. Miraculously, I'm lucky enough to find a therapist I can afford at least for a little while until my car breaks down and I have to dump all my money into that so I can get to work before I get fired again. After months of seeing a therapist, we determine that the snail is one of the main issues. Seems obvious, but I was so far gone I couldn't see it. But actually, it wasn't just the lingering feelings of grief and sadness and guilt from committing snail manslaughter. Snail slaughter? Snail slaughter? Why does it sound more gruesome than male manslaughter? Male slaughter, what am I? Anyway, it was more than just the snail I stepped on. See, when I was younger, a snail saved my life. It jumped in front of a bullet for me. And with its last dying snail breath, it told me to believe in myself and follow my dreams. That snail turned out to be the leader of all snails and the whole snail community blamed me for their leader's death. And the more I believe in myself and follow my dreams like the leader snail wanted me to, the more I'm hated by the other snails. My happiness is their grief. I fall off on my YouTube videos, getting just 10% of the views I used to, and now I'm down to only making one video per month. Maybe some part of me wanted this, because now the rest of the snails are happy at my downfall. But I'm no longer honoring the leader snail's dying wish. I can't win even when I'm winning, so I might as well lose while I'm losing. Apparently, my mental block wasn't just because of that one snail I stepped on. That might have been manageable. It went all the way back to the trauma I faced as a child when the leader snail sacrificed itself for me and I saw the life slippery slide out of its little snail body and all the pain it caused the other snails in the wake of their leader's death. Stepping on that snail built upon what I faced as a child, the trauma I unknowingly still carried with me after all these years. It seems so obvious now, but after being in that toxic cycle of distracting myself and running away from the pain for so long, 
Everything got obscured. I thought I was just dumb. I won't be able to move on with my life until I move on from the snail death. Both of them. I take the snail body and crunched bits of shell out of my freezer, and I finally give it to the snail community so they can give it a proper burial. I listen to them, even the hurtful things they say to me. I let them go through their grieving process, and then I let myself go through mine. They might not understand me or what happened on those days, probably because of the language barrier. I will always regret not taking snail language in high school. But that's okay. They don't have to understand, because I understand the pain of the snail community now, and I understand the leader snail made a choice to save me. There was nothing I could do about it. After a while, I'm finally able to move on from the snail I stepped on. I face all of the emotions that have been building up, the ones I tried to distract myself from. And now that I have faced those problems, and felt the pain, and worked through them, I feel lighter. There's no thoughts haunting me as I lay in bed at night. I reach out to my friends. We have a lovely conversation. They seem happy for me. I focus more on getting my schoolwork done, even when the work is hard and boring. My grades start rising. I start performing better at work. I demand a raise from my boss. I get denied. I unite the workers and form a union, and now we all get pay raises and better and safer working conditions. I can afford therapy full time now. I start sleeping at more consistent times and my skin starts clearing up. I'm joking around more and my friends and coworkers say I'm different, that I'm full of life. Maybe a little annoying sometimes, but full of life. I'm walking home and my favorite song comes on. I sing along. After four miserable years, I'm singing along to my favorite song. I don't even have to force myself to do it. It just comes naturally. Suddenly, as I'm letting myself get lost in the music for the first time in years, I hear a squish and my foot slips. I look down and see a skid mark as long as my forearm. Beneath my crusty shoe is a green and red stripe that used to be a frog. Now, every time I hear that song, I think of the frog. Not only can I not bring myself to sing along to my favorite song anymore, I can't even listen to it now. I start regretting everything. If I would have just stayed depressed, I wouldn't have allowed myself to get lost in the song. I would have seen the frog and been able to avoid it. That's what I get for trying to do better for myself. Turns out the snails were right all along. I am worthless. I promise myself I will never sing again. And then some more stuff happens, the plot moves forward, there are some twists and callbacks, and then something something, everyone lives happily ever after. The end. <laughs> In order to get back to making art and enjoying life, I have to get back to a healthier state of mind. And to do that, I have to identify the obstacles, which I can't seem to do, not without professional help anyway. Then. I have to face those obstacles because they're in the way. Whatever those obstacles are, I have no idea yet. What are my obstacles? And are those obstacles actually just surface level problems that have deeper roots? I think if you can answer that question, the pathway to solving your problem will start to reveal itself. But it's actually deceptive how difficult that question is to answer because it goes very deep. Many of us have to do some serious introspection to figure out why. Many of us need professional help, which can be tough to pursue if you have no motivation, right? And even tougher if you don't have access to healthcare. No money, no healthy. Which makes me wonder, am I really an example of valuable earth life? Or am I just a dollar sign? Motivational videos can have helpful suggestions, and they're not bad. But I don't think there's a solution that will work for everybody. I think that's why this question gets asked so much, because it's not a simple answer, and that is what makes it so frustrating. I like to think about it this way. If your problem is that you can't draw hands, that's easy. There are tutorials walking you through step by step how to draw hands, because a hand will always be a hand. But motivation isn't that simple. It has to do with your personal character development. 
which is tied to your personal character lore, your backstory. Your character traits are not only different from everyone else in the world, but who you are now is different from who you were in the past and who you will be in the future. You're going to undergo a major character development turning point many different times in your life. Where you're at right now is just a moment in time. It will change. One of the first things we learn in writing class is that each character has their own motivation, right? The thing that's driving them forwards in the plot. Their goals and the reason why they're pursuing them. And then, of course, there's an obstacle that gets in the way, they're tested, blah, 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 blah. Each character is different. So, what are your goals and why are you pursuing them? Are they really your goals? Sometimes we don't realize that our goals are actually to satisfy someone else rather than ourselves. A common thing a lot of people have, and I wish I saw this trope more in fiction, a lot of us are seeking approval from a parent or someone whose opinion we care about. If I become the person I think they want me to be, they will love and accept me. And I need their love and acceptance because I don't love and accept myself. For whatever reason, probably relating to the character's backstory. Sometimes our goals are actually just a stepping stone to get to a bigger, more important goal. Sometimes we don't even know what our goals are. Sometimes we don't have any. But I got a question for you. Why do you make art in the first place? Why don't you just stop already? Why do you insist on pushing yourself so hard to make art when you don't feel like it? Why did you click on this video? I'll let you deal with that on your own time after this video. But as for me, it's complicated. I'm not entirely sure why I make art. I know it has something to do with video games and helping people draw the things they want to draw. But it's got to be deeper than that, right? I don't know, I'm still searching for an answer for that myself. The thing that really holds me back though is that there are so many other artists who are better than me. Who am I to be teaching people how to draw? I'm not even good. There are artists like Ethan Becker who have worked for these big studios and are so good and they put together these great videos. They know so much. Who am I to belong on the same platform as them? It seems like the only way I can push past that and get things done is if I just turn off my brain and complete the task. But then that defeats the whole purpose of enjoying the process of creating art. If I have to turn off my brain and turn off my emotions in order to get through it, is it worth it? Not being able to draw is the easy part. There's a clear path you can take to fix that. And that's why this motivation thing is so much harder than all the other problems to solve. There's no one secret thing that will work. There is one solid piece of advice that I can give though, and that is to accept that sometimes motivation will be gone, and sometimes your artwork is not as good as it normally is. If you have to wait for motivation to come to you before you're able to draw, it might not come for a long, long time. If you're okay with that, that's cool. But if art must be made, you're just gonna have to draw through the pain. I think the most freeing thing about being an artist is when you can accept that you suck at art. If you love it enough to keep going, even when you suck, you're meant to be an artist. Maybe you're not meant to be an artist though. Maybe you should keep it as a hobby, only doing it when you feel like it and not pushing yourself. Or maybe you should put all of your energy into it and dedicate your life to it and make it your career. I don't know. And maybe you don't know either. But in order to choose the right path for you, you need to ask yourself what it is that you want. What do you want for yourself? And don't think about anybody else, just follow what makes you happy. If it's something else besides art, follow that path. And if it is art, I'll be here making dumb little tutorials and videos to help you along the way. At least until they find my body covered in angry snails and frogs. It's probably only a matter of time. I did say earlier that these drawings shouldn't have been born, but maybe I'm just disappointed in them because they don't satisfy my ego. Maybe I think I'm better than them. Maybe whoever created humans feels the same way about their work. Maybe we don't satisfy their ego or live up to their standards. Maybe they did a better job on the life on other planets and are disappointed with life on Earth. 
Maybe the point of these little doodles isn't to be pretty art. Maybe the process of pushing through this feeling of dread and hopelessness is the art. Not the final product, but the story in which they were made. If you've been drawing along, go ahead and stop now. Take a look. If our drawings are ugly, hopefully we're at least glad we made them. Or glad we tried anyway. We can even throw them away or delete them. But at least we can say we drew something today. And I am very proud of you. I mean that. Thank you very much to my supporters on Patreon. And I literally have no idea why Skillshare keeps sponsoring these dumb videos. But thank you for being the reason I have healthcare. I mean, thank you, Skillshare, for being a place to learn with video tutorials that are organized like classes on topics like illustration, design, music production, photography, video, freelancing, productivity, and more. I swear, if you want a good, quick, easy art class, use the link in my description to get the free trial and use your free trial to watch the one by Vashti Harrison called Illustrating in Procreate, Drawing a Shareable Time Lapse. You don't need Procreate though. It walks you through the whole process of creating a digital painting from start to finish, and is beginner friendly. The first thousand people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. You can squeeze a lot out of that free trial and you can cancel anytime. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and to anyone still here, I really hope that things start going better for you. There are lots of different reasons why people would click on this video, some more urgent than others. So wherever you're at, I'm rooting for you, and I hope we can talk more about this later. If I ever make another video, I'll see you there. Later, skater.